We are starting on a new section of the course today. We'll be covering electromagnetic wave propagation, which means we'll be starting a new challenge. The next few slides will briefly introduce the challenge for this portion of the course. In July 1962, during the Cold War, the United States conducted a high-altitude nuclear test called Starfish Prime. As part of this test, a Thor missile carrying a W-49 thermonuclear warhead was launched from Johnston Island. Here's an image of Johnston Island, and it's out in the Pacific Ocean. The map on the right shows the location of Johnston Island in the Pacific Ocean. You can see Hawaii and the United States in relation to Johnston Island. The missile arced up to a height of over 1,100 kilometers, and as it descended a pr at a pre-programmed altitude of 400 kilometers, the 1.4 megaton nuclear warhead detonated. At the time, the U.S. military was aware that a nuclear explosion would generate an electromagnetic pulse, sh for short we can say EMP, that radiates away from the explosion due to the interaction of gamma rays with the atmosphere. However, the resulting EMP from this particular nuclear test turned out to be much more powerful than was anticipated. You can think of an EMP as basically a high-intensity electromagnetic wave that propagates away from the blast zone. Because it's a pulse, the electromagnetic wave extends over a range of frequencies. The Starfish, Starfish Prime test made the public aware for the first time that a nuclear explosion generates an EMP. This is because the explosion knocked out about 300 streetlights in Hawaii, which was about 1,500 kilometers away. On the left here is an image taken from Hawaii of an artificial aurora created by the explosion. The Starfish test also caused uh, three satellites in low Earth orbit, orbit to fail, and in the coming months six more failed as a result of radiation damage to their solar arrays and electronics. On the right here is an image of one of the satellites that failed. Now 1962 was a long time ago, but concerns about EMPs have grown even stronger in recent years because well, first of all, more countries have access to nuclear weapons than in 1962, and they may even potentially have access to non-nuclear EMP weapons. And two, societies rely more and more heavily on electrotechnologies and infrastructure, which are particularly vulnerable to EMPs. Here's a list of some activities the U.S. government has been involved in since the turn of the century. First, and 2001, the U.S. government established an EMP commission, and they had a number of tasks, such as assessing threats to the U.S., the vulnerability of our systems, both military and civilian, the ability of us to recover from EMPs, and the feasibility of hardening systems against an EMP attack. And some other things have also been um, done since the early 2000s. When considering the effects of EMP on an EMP on society, there are a lot of different electrical components and systems we could consider. On the next slide, I'll introduce the next design challenge. The next de design challenge will be related to airplanes again, because considering airplanes is going to help bring a lot more of the material that we'll be covering to life. So I apologize that we have another topic here relating to airplanes, but um, hopefully by the end you'll see why I chose to have airplane-related topic. At any given moment, there are typically a lot of airplanes in the sky. So if an EMP is generated by either a nuclear explosion or an EMP weapon, potentially a lot of airplanes could be affected simultaneously. During the first half of our study, of electromagnetic wave propagation, our challenge is to design a measurement setup so we can physically test the effect of an EMP on the operation of a commercial airplane. We want our measurement to be able to answer questions like, 
Could the airplane just keep operating as usual if it's already flying around? What systems on the airplane might be affected and which would not be affected? Ideally, our measurement setup would help guarantee that the aircraft would not lose any critical systems, like the engines, generators, and pressurization. Non-critical systems might be navigation and communications in the short term. Take out your in-class notebooks and spend, say, a couple minutes writing out what the design challenge is and how you would solve it knowing what you know today. Write down whatever comes to mind. We want to test the effect of an EMP on a physical aircraft. So maybe make a sketch of where you would put the aircraft during the test, what type of source you might use, and how you would ensure the safety of the aircraft and anyone in the vicinity. Later we'll compare the design ideas you come up with today and hopefully the improved design ideas you come up with in a couple weeks when we finish up this part of the course.